Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired software engineer from Microsoft going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And today, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about the secure boot vulnerability that's just been discovered affecting potentially millions of Windows machines spread across some 200 various models from a half dozen manufacturers such as Acer, Dell, Gigabyte, Intel, Supermicro, and perhaps others. The vulnerability is in the secure boot process. Secure Boot is a security feature designed to ensure that a device boots using only software that is trusted by the original equipment manufacturer, or OEM, which effectively means whoever made your motherboard. It was developed to prevent unauthorized software and malware from taking control of the system during the boot process. The process begins with the system firmware, which is based on the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI. When a computer is powered on, the UEFI firmware initializes and starts checking the signatures of the firmware itself, ensuring that it has not been tampered with. This is the first step in establishing the chain of trust. The UEFI firmware contains a little database of certified and trusted keys, and when Secure Boot is enabled, the firmware will use them to verify the digital signature of the bootloader before it is executed. The bootloader is that first piece of software that runs after the firmware. It's responsible for loading the operating system. For Windows, this bootloader is typically bootmanager.efi. The verification process works by using public key cryptography. The UEFI firmware checks the bootloader's signature against the trusted certificates stored in the firmware database. If the bootloader's signature matches one of the trusted certificates, it will be allowed to execute. If not, the firmware will halt the boot process, preventing any untrusted code from running. Once the bootloader is verified and executed, it then loads the Windows operating system kernel and other critical components as well as device drivers. These components all also have a digital signature that is verified by the bootloader before they're loaded into memory. This ensures that every piece of software that runs during the boot process is verified and trusted, extending the chain of trust from the firmware all the way down to the operating system. Throughout this process, the chain of trust is maintained. It starts with the firmware, which verifies the bootloader, then the bootloader verifies the operating system kernel and other critical components. This chain of trust ensures that only trusted software is executed at every stage of the boot process, protecting the system from rootkits and other malicious software that could compromise the boot process. One of the major driving forces behind the quest for secure boot was the desire to prevent a UEFI rootkit from being installed on a machine. A UEFI rootkit is a particularly insidious form of malware that targets the UEFI firmware. And because it operates at such a fundamental level, a UEFI rootkit can exert extensive control over a system while remaining virtually undetectable by traditional antivirus software and operating system level defenses. The process begins when the rootkit finds a way to insert itself into the UEFI firmware. This could happen through several vectors, such as malicious firmware updates, sophisticated phishing attacks that exploit firmware vulnerabilities, or even through direct access to the machine. Once the rootkit is somehow embedded in the UEFI, it can establish a foothold that persists through reboots and even operating system reinstallation and formatting. A UEFI rootkit is particularly dangerous because of its persistence and stealth. By residing in the firmware, it initializes before the operating system, giving it the ability to intercept and manipulate the boot process. This means that it can load other malicious software into the operating system while remaining hidden from traditional safety measures. The rootkit can control virtually every aspect of the system, capturing sensitive data, introducing further malware, or sabotaging the system's integrity without being detected. The primary danger of a UEFI rootkit lies in its ability to persist even after extensive efforts to clean the system. Traditional malware removal techniques, such as reformatting the hard drive or reinstalling the operating system, are simply ineffective against this type of rootkit because it operates outside the scope of the OS. This makes it extremely challenging to detect and eradicate, posing a severe threat to any compromised system. By ensuring that only signed and trusted software can be executed during the boot process, Secure Boot significantly mitigates the risk of UEFI rootkits and other low-level malware. Or that is, it did until very recently. That's because security researchers from the firm Binarly uncovered a major vulnerability that compromises the secure boot mechanism on over 200 device models from prominent manufacturers, including Acer, Dell, Gigabyte, Intel, and Supermicro. The vulnerability discovered by Binarly is particularly concerning because it effectively nullifies the protection offered by secure boot. The researchers found that the implementation of secure boot in these devices contained flaws that could be exploited by attackers. 
Specifically, the vulnerabilities are related to improper handling of the boot process and inadequate verification of critical boot components. The researchers identified that certain UEFI firmware versions did not correctly implement these verification steps. This flaw allows an attacker to bypass the signature checks and execute unverified and potentially harmful code. By exploiting this vulnerability, attackers can insert a rootkit or other persistent malware that gains control over the system at a fundamental level, even before the operating system is loaded, as we said. This means that traditional security measures which rely on the operating system to function are rendered ineffective. Further analysis revealed that the vulnerabilities were due to errors in the firmware code supplied by the manufacturers. These errors included improper validation of key variables and failure to enforce cryptographic checks at crucial points in the boot sequence. The compromised secure boot process poses a significant risk because it undermines one of the foundational security mechanisms of modern computing devices. With secure boot defeated, malicious actors can execute unauthorized code during the boot process, potentially gaining deep control over the system. This could lead to persistent and, as we said, stealthy malware, data breaches, and other security incidents. Martin Smolaire, a malware analyst specializing in rootkits who reviewed the binary research, was quoted as saying, It's a big problem. It's basically an unlimited secure boot bypass for these devices that use this particular platform key. So until device manufacturers or OEMs provide firmware updates, anyone can basically execute any malware or untrusted code during system boot. Of course, privileged access is required, but that's not a problem in many cases. Now, the most entertaining and somewhat baffling aspect of the secure boot compromise is the inclusion of the cryptographic keys that were explicitly labeled something like test only, do not ship. And though removed later, these keys were fully disclosed at one time on GitHub. These keys were never meant to be part of any final publicly released product. Their purpose was solely for internal testing during the development and manufacturing processes. However, due to oversight or negligence, certain manufacturers mistakenly incorporated these test keys into the production firmware that was eventually shipped out to customers. This error meant that the keys, which should have been revoked and never trusted in a live environment, were instead accepted by the secure boot process as valid. Consequently, any software signed with these test keys could be loaded during the boot sequence without triggering the usual security checks designed to prevent unauthorized or malicious code from executing. This fundamental breach in the chain of trust essentially rendered the secure boot feature ineffective on affected devices, exposing them to potential security threats. The inclusion of these test-only do-not-ship keys is a critical mistake because it undermines the entire premise of secure boot. The security feature relies on a strict verification process where each component in the boot sequence is checked against a database of trusted keys. And so by inadvertently including test keys in the database, the manufacturers introduced a vulnerability that could be exploited by attackers to install rootkits, giving them deep control. This incident highlights the importance of meticulous key management and stringent quality control in the manufacturing process. It serves as a stark reminder that even small oversights can have significant repercussions in the realm of cybersecurity. The mistake of including test keys not meant for public release underscores the need for manufacturers to rigorously audit their firmware before it is shipped, ensuring that only trusted and verified keys are included in the final product. If you've got a secure boot machine from Acer, Dell, Gigabyte, Intel, or Supermicro, check your manufacturer website to see if your particular model is impacted. If it is, your best bet will be to wait for a firmware update that includes a new key database to fix this issue. In the meantime, keep in mind that someone needs at least administrative rights through some other exploit or through physical access in order to install the rootkit, so your best defense until a fix is available is to be rigorous on all of your other security matters from strong passwords to firewalls and so on. Now, if you found today's episode to be any combination of informative or entertaining, remember I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like on the video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. Please consider sending this video to a friend if you think it covered the subject well. And please do check out the free sample of my new book on Amazon, The Non-Visible Part of the Autism Spectrum. It's intended for folks that don't have autism, but who suspect that they might have a few characteristics that put them somewhere on the spectrum. It's everything I know now about living a successful life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. Check it out at the link in the video description. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.